I'm going to show you how to put a Creative Commons license on your work. Just make sure before you do that that you are the copyright owner of the work in question. Second, make sure that any works you're basing your work on, or embedding within your work, are in the public domain, are licensed with a Creative Commons license that allows derivative works, are being used in a way that's a really clear-cut case of fair use, or are licensed to you for this use by the original copyright owner. Once you've verified all that, the easiest way to get the Creative Commons license chooser is to, is to Google it. Select the Choose a License Creative Commons page in the search results. That takes you to a form that asks a few quick questions. First it asks, allow modifications of your work? This means do you want to allow derivative works or do you want to restrict people to using your work as is? If you click no, you get the no derives facet of the license, which means that people have to use your work as is. And if you simply click yes, there are no restrictions at all. But if you click yes as long as others share alike, you get the share alike facet, which means that people can make changes but they have to put their new work under a Creative Commons license that allows derivative works. Next it asks, allow commercial uses of your work. You may be wondering what the this is a free culture license thing is over there on the right with the green seal of approval. Any Creative Commons license that allows derivative works and commercial use is a free culture license, and that's considered a good thing because it encourages maximum sharing, usage, and remixing of your work. In general, license jurisdiction should be set to international because open educational resources are created with the expectation that they will be used worldwide. Next, you have to fill in some boxes with the title of the work, the author to whom the work should be attributed, and the URL that should be cited in the attribution. You don't necessarily need to fill out source work URL or more permissions URL. Those have to do with citing works that you used in your work. Note that you can choose a full-sized Creative Commons logo or a compact one. Now you choose from the Format of Work menu. And finally you choose from the License Mark menu. If your work is going to be displayed online as a web page, select HTML plus RDFA. When you do that, in the box to the right it gives you a code nugget that you will copy and paste into the HTML code of your web page. Usually, you want the license to display in the page's footer or in a sidebar. In addition to being human-readable, it will also make your website show up to search engines as open content. If your work is an offline .doc or .txt document, you get a license statement to copy and paste into the header or footer. If your work is a document in PDF format or an image in any format, you get an XMP file to download that you can then embed in your document or image. This has the advantage of being a form of metadata that will travel with the file whenever it is copied, but it requires advanced skills. It is much easier and just as legal to just copy and paste the blurb that you get for the offline documents into your document while you're editing it in your word processing software and then convert it into a PDF file. If you are dealing with an image or an audio or video file, you can simply put the statement into a caption. Can you put something in the Creative Commons without using the license chooser? Yes, absolutely. For example, if you create a YouTube video, YouTube gives you the option of putting it under a Creative Commons attribution license. You could also just put Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike, or whatever license variation into the header or footer of any document or the caption of any image, audio, or video that you create. It's just as legally binding. But the license chooser helps you decide on the license that best suits your purposes, and makes sure that you format it right. 